Vikings. Uh, I don't even know how to transition that over to the Minnesota Vikings, <laughs> but we will do our best. Uh, the Vikings went 7-9 and nine last year. Uh, not great under Mike Zimmer. Hey, Chris and I are massive fans of Mike Zimmer. We like what they've done with that organization. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kirk Cousins, eh, you know, ha- hasn't been, uh, has not been great the last, uh, mm-hmm. however, well, since he got there, basically. Has not been great. Yeah. Um, they needed yeah. edge help. Since he they started needed... at any position, anytime, anywhere, <laughs> against any team that was competent in any way. Yes. There you go. They needed edge help. They needed guard. They needed tackle. They needed safety. And here's what they ended up doing. They went and knocked out the tackle situation early. Uh, tackle Christian Darisaw out of Virginia Tech. I thought that was a fantastic value at number 23. They wait around until the third round, and then they draft quarterback Kellen Mond out of Texas A&M, which I thought was a really good spot. Terrific. They yep. kind of reached a little bit for Chaz Surratt, a linebacker out of North Carolina, but super athletic guy, former quarterback who switched over to linebacker. He is, he's again, a lightning bolt. He's all over the place. He's not always in the right position, but he can hit. Yeah, but people. under Zimmer's defense, he'll be in the right position. I, I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, they took guard Wyatt Davis out of Ohio State in the third round. I thought that was a great pick. Patrick Jones, the second out of Pittsburgh, uh, edge rusher. That's a really good pick. Uh, Kene Nwangu out of Iowa State, running back in the fourth round. Cornerback Cameron Bynum out of California, uh, another cornerback in the fourth round. Another fourth round pick, edge rusher Janaris Robinson out of Florida State. Wide receiver, Amir Smith-Marset out of Iowa in the fifth round. Tight end, Zach Davidson, um, let's see, in the fifth round. And then edge rusher, Jalen Twyman out of Pitt in the sixth round, who I thought, personally, should have gone much higher. But, um, but yeah, I this is another one. I think they did really, really well with this. They hit basically everything that they needed, and, and they got value guys and guys that I think are going to make the roster and make this team significantly better. I, I completely agree, and I, you know, Minnesota holds a special place in my heart. It is my mom's favorite team. It has been my entire life. She loves the Vikings because she liked purple as a girl. I mean, she'll freely tell you that, and that's what that is. But I like this draft, and I like the tackle they got. One thing I will say, the problem with Minnesota, especially last year, they went with these young corners, Gladney and Dantzler, and they're not good. They're they're bad. You, they couldn't stop anybody. I know they brought in, you know, a shell of Patrick Peterson to maybe shore that up, but I would have liked to have seen – a little more capital early on on that defensive secondary because that was a massive, massive weakness for this team. However, getting Kellen Mond in the third round is a great thing. It's no secret for me. Even though Jimmy Garoppolo's only played one season for the 49ers, one of the happiest days of my life was when they traded for Garoppolo, and we all knew, thank God, they're not going to give a max contract to Kurt Bleeping Cousins because Kurt Cousins, (laughs) I just talked about Andy Dalton on primetime, 1B who sucks on primetime and sucks in big games against winning teams, that's Kurt Cousins. Kirk Cousins cannot beat winning teams. You are never going to make a deep playoff run with Kirk Cousins as your quarterback. He'll be fine on a Sunday morning at 10 in the Superdome and the Silver Dome and smash up the Lions to Jefferson and Thielen, no problem. But you put him against a good team or a good defense, that kid absolutely falls apart. He's a mental midget, one of the worst, worst big time quarterbacks I've ever seen, and the, the most over overpaid quarterback maybe ever he's more overpaid than Keith Van Horn was that last year with the Dallas Mavericks when he didn't even play and he made 40 he's more overpaid than Bobby Bonilla is every year on the 4th of July okay getting (laughs) I mean Kirk Cousins is grossly overpaid and I like Kellen Mond he was one of my favorite quarterbacks uh in this draft I actually I know a lot of people are saying he needs to I think he's very productive I think he could play right away And uh, it would not shock me if the Vikings start out slow. You see Kellen Mond come in. You see a completely different offense. Uh, Overall, like what the Vikings did. Love me some uh, Kellen Mond. And Derrissaw, obviously, an absolute beast in the first round. Great pickup for them. That's going to help Dalvin Cook as well because they need to keep that guy upright You got that right. Hey, Chris, before you jump in here, Kellen Mond, uh, last year it was Justin Herbert that went number six overall. uh, But he played in the NFL completely differently than what his offense was in college. In college, what Kellen Mond was was the leader of an incredibly slow offense that did not utilize uh, big-time plays, right? They, they did not use explosive plays in Jimbo Fisher's offense. Kellen Mond, I think, has all the tools to be able to do that. He is the guy in this year's draft that I could see looking completely different than what he did in college. college. 
hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go I ahead, totally Chris. agree. I totally agree. I love the Kellamon pick. I uh, love the Darisol pick. I think this team got a little better. I think those cornerbacks are going to be better. I think Patrick Peterson's brought in to be a leader in the cornerback room, not necessarily sure. to, but he's far and away from the man that he was when he was the lockdown cover corner, the best cornerback right. in, 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 in NFL history. He, he's not that anymore. He's just not. Um, right. But he can teach those young guys that they have in there and, 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 and really still be productive, just not, a lockdown number one dude. Um, I like this team. I they did what I thought they would do, which is they went out and got athleticism. Okay. They got sparks guys. They got guys that that their their vertical is really good. Their long jump is really good. Like they're explosive type players. And that's what I like about how they drafted and 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 what they did. Um, I'm with you. I don't believe look, I don't I don't think Cousins is terrible, but Cousins has a ceiling. Cousins is a team that can make you to a wild card game every year of his life. And then yep. lose that wild card game every year of his life. And then yep. he, because he wins just enough to make the playoffs, quote unquote, every year, you're never going to cut him. You're never going to, hey, like, why would you do this? So I, I would rather you be a bag of rocks for three years and me have wasted the pick. So I know I can throw you away and then I could go get something else. But when you make the playoffs every year, every year, every year, or just miss the playoffs every year, every year, every year, you're in the hunt. It's hard to get rid of that guy because you're afraid yeah. of the unknown of not having that guy. And so I, I would rather live boom or bust. I think Kellamon's going to be boom or bust. I think he has a chance to be really good there's also a world where in three years he doesn't play football anymore okay that's true but i'm okay with that that's that's the devil i'm okay with dealing with yeah. all right um the other thing you you said uh kyle about him being the os overpaid you need to go look into the amount of money sam bradford took from the nfl oh that, yes yes sam bradford's a great, sam bradford, great point whenever anybody stole a brings lot up of money. anybody no the yeah. biggest thief in nfl history is samuel bradford <laughs> that's a great point that's a great point and no i doubt, do not no, disagree it, it, the second yeah. the second place person is really far down that road yes you are absolutely right i don't know how he did that that many years in a row he's a, too. he's a damn wizard it was the first it was the very last <laughs> yeah. year so Sorry, it was the last year where they didn't have the rookie wage scale and rookies first round pick, first overall right. picks, whatever, got paid just an obscene amount, like a disgusting, gross amount of money. Yeah. And yeah. and so he got his first contract was ridiculous. His second contract was ridiculous. And then he yep. just got you know, pieces of He stole from contract. everybody. He stole from the Eagles. He stole from the Vikings. He stole from everybody. everybody. That's yes, it. he did. Kyle, you brought up yesterday Washington back in the day taking Heath Shuler and Gus Farratt in the same draft. Uh, yeah. They did the same thing here with Kirk Cousins and RG3, and Cousins, of course, has made the mm -hmm. most out of it. So, yep. um, But, yeah, obviously making more money from the Vikings right now, doing his thing. We'll, uh, we'll move on to the last team in the uh, NFC North. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.